There are two of the fuckers. And at the moment, they're holding their distance from me for some unknown reason. Well, I suppose it might be that my werewolf, which can be, you know, pretty off-putting for some. To me, the smell of death and dry soil, old tombs and still air, heated stone and other such cliched shite that you would associate with the bastards. Yeah, I can stink them. They stink, but... Not in a usual human way, there's not any life in these things. You can probably guess what they are already. I mean, every fucking tropey werewolf story must have these bastards drop in at some point to ruin it. Although, I have to feel better knowing that these were not the sparkly, lovelorn types, just the, the psychotic, narcissistic ones. Usually, I would have gotten quite well with them, but these guys are so far up themselves they fart through their mouths. I wonder if they do fart these things. I'm not sure at all. There is a male and a female. I mean, it's difficult with these twats to tell. Not that I'm judging them on gender or things. That's their choice. And to be honest, I couldn't give a fuck what anyone wants to be. No, I, I don't think they have a right to be what they want to be. I just don't care enough to have an opinion. If you are a woman and you wanted to be treated like a man, then that's fine. If you want to be a teapot... That's fine too. I don't give a shit enough in general about human sensibilities. Unless I can get you very upset by offending you. And then we do that stuff for shits and giggles. I think personally that some of these these creatures read the Anne Rice books and, and think that androgynous is the way to go. But at least I like to repeat, they're not fucking sparkly. Do you know how much werewolves and the ancient ones hate fucking twilight? Stephanie Myers, I hate you. Well, actually, I have no idea if they hate twilight. I've not really had that conversation with them, to be honest. I sort of recognise the female. I thought I'd met her before. But it wasn't me, it was Fen, my it? And then he starts raging on about the fact that she's really annoying. And it would be really nice if we didn't meet them. You obviously know that Fen's my wolf soul. You don't? Right, okay, here we go. Fen was made thousands of years ago. He is the soul of a wolf that was then transported into people when the wolf pack died. And then he is invisible and like a ghost. And when I need to become a werewolf, he sort of, I won't say comes inside me because that sounds awful. But he becomes part of me and I can be a wolf or a werewolf. And his name's Fen and he is dead ace and we like each other and he's got his own personality and shit. And if you listen to the other episodes, then it will make a bit more sense. My wolf soul hates these creatures more than anything else. Which is saying a lot. Because, you know, he's an absolute ball of hate in general. My problem with them is they get idolised and, and shit when werewolves in literature never get the same love. Their charisma is all fake too. I mean, they emit a glamour that means that Humans that look at them see them as the pinnacle of what they want as a partner, a friend, or just a fucking general. I have natural charisma and good looks. These twats rely on magic. That's really weak. Really weak ass. I am hunting on the streets of Tokyo of all places. Hark at me, I'm in Japan. It's my first holiday in Japan, and I have to say it is fucking mental. It's like any modern metropolis, just a little more, just a little more, a little more Tokyo. I don't really know what to say. It's all like big and massive and technological, technological, it's like modern and stuff. But you get a massive clash as behind the scenes are areas of tiny streets that are stacked with a huge population. It is really not what I expected it to be, to be honest. It's... It's such a clash of the future and the past that it warps the mind a little. Also, the lack of space is fucking killing me, to be honest. I made the mistake of staying in one of those, like, micro-hotels, have you heard of them? Because I thought it would be cool, but being trapped in a small tube with an annoyed posit is fucking hell. The two of us in there just ended up in a huffy fight. 
Sorry. I'm currently in my wolf form eating a small Japanese meal that I accidentally ran into, which is often the way with fast food. You know what they say about Japanese food, though? It's only temporarily filling, so you usually have to eat lots of it. And then an hour later and you're hungry again. They like their food fresh here, too. I ate sushi yesterday for the first time. I mean proper sushi, not that shit you get from Tesco's. And it was still moving when I picked it up with me chopsticks. They they did not kill the grouper. That's a kind of fish. They chopped it up while it still lived and gave me its living flesh. But that's how flesh should be. So this little meal that I'm eating now is still complaining as I break into its abdomen for the hot, bloody meat. Anyway, the night walkers as they arrogantly call themselves, need to be addressed. Yes, they are definitely here. They think they are so fucking cool. They think that I've not noticed them, but as if they could get anywhere near me without noticing them. I can, I could hear them and see them and smell them, but I did my best to pretend that I'd not noticed them. They always hate it when you spoil their oh-so-cool entrances. I mean... I did kind of expect them to drop into the alley and land in superhero poses in order to introduce themselves, which, to be honest, would have been really cool. But they didn't even have the decency to do that. They just walked up to me and started an unwanted fucking conversation. A strangely sexy but sibilant voice gently spoke to me from my rear as I ate. I hadn't fired. It was more female than female and had that hoity-toity arrogant hint that it had gone to a really posh school or the pretense that it had. I mean, it, it was like the Edinburgh accent. You know, the one where they do a posher English accent than the posh English people. It's as though people from Edinburgh have decided that they're better at everything than the English, including the fucking accent. The way they speak is properly annoying and must involve them learning by never actually moving their lower jaw. They put marbles in their mouth or something, I've heard. I'm not sure, but God, it was a posh bird's voice, and it made me a little warm in the groinal region. But these creatures tend to do that in general. It's kind of one of their things, shit, looking back on it, and I realise it was like, well, actually, it was like, uh, shit, that was it. It was an impression of Kate Beckinsale. Is Kate an actual vampire? How old is she now? Let me just Google it. According to Google, she's 49 years old. Oh my God, have you seen these images of her? 49? Wow, she looks fantastic. Maybe she is a vampire. Hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Back to the story. The, the vampire lady started talking to me. Hello, doggy do. What are you up to this evening? This made the hairs on the back of my neck rise, and all I wanted to do was let that voice scratch me behind my ears. I struggled but managed to ignore her because I knew it would really piss her off if I did, so I kept on eating, making sure that my table manners were as disgusting as I possibly could be, and that blood was flying with gobbets of flesh flown in for extra disgust in all directions. The Dark Ones do hate untidiness. They are truly anal, and not anal in the good sense of the word, if you know what I mean, people. They are OCD. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder is not the only thing that fits the acronym for them, though. Overly Confident Douchebags works too. I mean, the idea that if you spill rice, you know, on the floor, that they will count every rice grain up and return it to the pot is a bit of a misnomer, but they would definitely spend the time to clear it up if they can. Then up sprang the male equivalent voice. It was quite greasy and shiny, but had that erotic overtone that normals could never achieve. Dog! My sister talks to you. Who do you think you are in ignoring her? At this point, inwardly, Fen and I had a little giggle to ourselves. The voices were, I've got to say, as hot as fuck and definitely wanted me to shag them. Sorry, nothing so crass as shag. That's terrible, isn't it? That's, that's us English, I'm afraid. Um, make love to the voices, but their glamour held very little over me. I allowed myself... To create a beautiful fart in A minor from my ass. 
I knew this would be an anathema for these creatures, but I would have fun with them because these fuckers thought they ruled the world. Oh, they kind of do. But they don't rule me, so they can fuck off with their high-mindedness and the idea that they're better than anything else. I could sense them walking around me, staring with a mix of ill humour and sort of trying to offer a look of little interest. They talked amongst themselves in a telepathic language that I can hear, but I can't understand. It was some high gothic shit or something. They were getting angry at my lack of interest, which was cool. I would keep winding them up until they went pop. They eventually walked around gracefully to stand before me while I ate my meal. They were not so stupid as to be too close, but they were close enough so that if and when I looked up, I would be met with their glory. They stood there for some time. It was a long time. A long, long time. The female started to tap her foot so I could tell I was getting on her tits, which was the point. She did have really nice tits though. I mean, the bralette thing that she wore was obviously black lace and silk or something. And the breasts were small like those of a dancer. I suppose not everyone's thing, but they were pretty much perfect. I would have happily spent 30 minutes with them on a rainy Sunday afternoon. I wonder if other people looking would see something different with the glamour. You know, you might be into massive breasts yourself. Maybe if you if you looked at her, you'd see massive huge boobies. Hmm. After more passive-aggressive ignoring, I decided I'd done this enough, so I looked up at them and did the quizzical dog head turn thing that dogs do when they try to feign interest in something. I was in my wolf form, so this may have looked somewhat comical from an eight-foot-tall, big, black dog, wolf-like beast type thing. When I did look up, it was at what were two of the most beautiful creatures that I had ever seen. I mean, fucking gorgeous, especially if you've got a thing for goths. Which, I do. She was in big black boots that ran to her knee in a somewhat pirate style Her lovely upper legs were coated in shiny latex, which could only be worn by someone dead and who did not sweat for any length of time. A living person would have been in chafing hell. Over her now established lovely breasts, have I mentioned her beautiful breasts? She wore a bra top designed to sink well with the tattoos that coated her skin. Very nice indeed. Lastly, to top it off, as it were, she had an open long leather jacket, all kind of Neo style from the Matrix. I always wonder if the vamps copy the films, or if the films copy the vamps. Their faces, well I could go into their description in great detail, but think of a really hot elf, like a really hot elf, out of Lord of the Rings, and then make them very pale with black hair. Think evil sexy elf yeah that's it you've got it he well to be honest he was pretty similar in that weird sort of similar cross-dressing androgynous way apart from the fact that he had a ruffled shirt and a fucking red satin cummerbund of all things i mean a normal human would have looked like a complete cock in it but he didn't sadly he looked fucking great to be honest her hair her hair was piled on her head in a hairstyle that would take hours to produce to make it look like she'd just thrown it up there it was it was held by two black chopsticks in a bun but her hair was so long that it still cascaded down her back and seemed to have a little life of its own it moved on its own dark volition it was mesmerizing and hypnotic his hair was shaved on one side and down past his shoulder on the other I would look like a real twat if I had hair like that, but somehow it worked for him. I suppose some people just have that essence of cool. Others have to try. I mean, look at Brad Pitt in Snatch. Have you seen it? At one point, he's dressed in dirty wife fronts, a string vest, and a pork pie hat. Yet, he is still fucking cool. Well, that was like these guys. They they oozed coolness and it pissed me off. I enjoy being envious if it inspires me to realise the thing that I envy. I look at something and realise that those I am jealous of can achieve those things. That means that I should be able to. To. This was painful as they had that gift that I could never have. Their eyes were exactly the same. 
Both had purple irises, and they were deep wells that you would gladly throw yourselves into without hesitation. As I say, I'm, I'm not badly affected by magic auras that they throw, but I was gagging to do whatever they wanted for them. They just kind of suck you in, and it, it's very difficult to break eye contact with them once you've established it. Honestly, these wankers have it all on their side. It's so unfair. I know I don't believe in fairness, but this is so unfair. Why don't we get any of that kind of shit being werewolves? They stood there all sexy and shit and cool swaggers. There was no wind, but somehow their hair flowed under the breath of the air around them. They both held perceived and perfected hateful smiles that started and ended at the mouth and showed arrogance, oh and of course, the evil cunt's pointy little teethies. Yep, you've guessed it, they were fecking vampires. I hate vampires, not in the werewolf versus vampire way of Underworld and every other fucking novel way, but in the way they were just so fucking cool without trying that it hurts my feelings. If they went to bed and got up, I bet they looked exactly like that straight away. Maybe that's it. The bastards never go to bed, do they? So they probably just look like that all the time. They don't have to prepare. Fucking vampires. Well, here we go. Let's see what the twats wanted and how I could ruin their respective night as I always like to do for everybody. I sat on my hindquarters, staring with the pretense that I was mesmerised by their resplendent glory. Then on purpose, because I am a bit of a dick, I burped, yawned and started licking my dick and balls. Because as a wolf, I can do that. And I thought it would be very amusing to me, and it really was. Unfortunately, they both realised I was fucking about and started clapping and smiling at me. The female bent over and waited for me to finish and look at her. Have you been a bad doggy? She sniped and looked at her twin. I assume that it's a twin? Maybe, I don't know. And they both laughed. They obviously thought that they were being hilarious because they both broke into perfect laughter that sounded so fucking nice i hate vampires language is a little tricky with the wolf voice box it doesn't work to be honest and the tongue is too long and so on so i decided to transform back to my human form to contend with these two in a more understandable way i sat cross-legged on the ground as a naked man looked up at the two of them offered a smile and pointed at my meal and asked do you guys want a bit the two looked upon the mess that was once a body and looked disgusted at the offer. I mean, these beautiful faces did disgust really well and I did feel a little bad initially for offering it to them. They have the power to make you feel less than them. Very impressive to make me feel a lower being with my ego. What? Why would we eat from the scraps you offer, dog, from your pitiful table? The girl asked as she squatted down to eye level with me, thinking that I would be mesmerised by her hypnotic eyes if she was at eye level. Sorry, I protested, just asking because I thought I was being polite about it. If that's going to be your attitude, I said as I got up and walked away. Plink! They somehow moved so fast that they were now standing in front of me in exact the same pose as prior. I smiled as though I was awed by this piece of shite magic. Wow, that was amazing. Are you guys like magicians or some shit? Where can I catch your act? Don't tell me, don't tell me. You've got a residency in Las Vegas, haven't you? Actually, looking at you guys, that would be ridiculous. I mean, can you imagine having your skin tone as white blue as yours and living in Las Vegas? What's your stage name? Ha ha. The male didn't laugh the ha ha, but actually spoke it. We are not stage magicians or tricksters, little dogmen. We are the immortals. The immortals? That's a fucking awesome stage name. Do you do a lot of dangerous shit with knives and guns? I asked. No, feral one. We don't do stage magic. 
So, so you guys are street performers. Can you show me a card trick? I would love that. I hear that it's a lot more difficult to get away with tricks when performing on the street. No. Are you really this stupid? We are not simple fake magicians. We are the real thing. We are... Pause for dramatic effect. Vampires. I stood and looked at them, giving them a quizzical look up and down. I was still naked, but perfectly, you know, unashamed at being so. I mean, I'm pretty relaxed in all my forms. I smiled at the girl and winked at the boy. Of course you are, I said in my most patronising voice, as I turned my back on them once more, as if the conversation was over, and I began to walk away, laughing to myself. They again, blink materialised in front of me. I purposefully took a look behind me to pretend to check if they were still there in their original spot and turned back. That's so fucking cool, you guys. But I know how you do this one. You both have twins and you switch between them to do this kind of thing. One set of twins hides down there and the other up here. And on a signal, you come out. Is that it? Is that it? I think it was uh, Penn and Teller that showed it. Or was it the Masked Magician? I can't remember, but that's fucking brilliant, though. But I do know how you do that one. I kept rattling on, trying to continue to speak inane nonsense because I knew it would drive them fucking mental that I wasn't just standing there in awe of their magnificence. Can we put your ego aside for a minute? Something important has happened. If there's anything more important than my ego on this ship, I want to cut and shut right now. I mean, I am a bit of a poser, but these guys take it to the next fucking level. People think that vampires are all about blood, but in reality... They are all high-level narcissists who thrive on the worship from their minions more than anything else. This means that when I meet them, I make sure that they realise that I think they are pointless dicks that I would never idolise. Enough. Enough of this. My sister and I came doggy hunting tonight for some sport. And you are the sport. The male vamp said. This made me quiet. This could be interesting. Vamps and werewolves, as far as I knew, kind of ignored each other as often as they could. I mean, why would we fight when we've got so much prey available? It makes no sense. I looked around as though looking for... The sport that they mentioned. Then overdramatically acted as though I realised that they meant me. I pointed to myself and gulped as though pretending to be a little bit frightened. You mean, you guys are hunting me? Do you? Why are you hunting? Are you going to kill me? The girl laughed as she strode off to my left. I have often wondered and wanted to meet a werewolf such as yourself to see what you're like. You aren't the first, but you are the most scariest that I've ever seen. I am over a thousand years old, and I'm no longer satisfied with the hunt of the human. It is too easy, and they are too pathetic to give any resistance. But finally, here we have true sport. A werewolf. I will bring you down and drink your blood from your still living body while you are incapable. I will take your head and placed it on the wall of my mansion as a reminder of this day. She turned and paused for dramatic effect again as her jacket and hair swirled around her and fell about her body. Shit, they do a lot of pausing for dramatic effect. Oh, I love it when a posh bird talks dirty, I said, clapping. Keep it up, love. I hope you spotted the quote, dog soldier. I can put this image and the words in my wank bank for a later date. Thank you very much. The man then moved to the opposite side of me and started to talk to gain my attention. Enough, you mangy beast. Prepare yourself for battle. You are about to be tested, bested and killed right here. Your time has come to die by our hands. Your life is forfeit to your betters, your masters, the immortals. If you'd have seen that written down, you would have seen like five exclamation marks after that. It didn't really kind of 
did need it, to be honest. I mean, he wasn't shouting really, but he was really properly enunciating. So cool. I, at this point, was horizontal and at head height as my werewolf, me, flew towards the throat of the man-thing child of the night. He reacted but was not quick enough, and I had my jaws wrapped around his neck and dragged him to the ground, shaking and ripping at the flesh. My teeth shredded his meat, and the thick blood flowed. He cried out as I worried him, much like a terrier worries a rat. Everything had happened so quickly that she did not realise the significance of what had just happened. She stared at me now, lying as the wolf, my paws on the body of a twin, crunching on the neck and upper torso as though the vamp was a chew toy. His protestations for help got weaker and weaker as sanguination robbed him of his voice. It took a while for the reality of what had happened to sink into her. She stood and stared in utter disbelief as she saw the results of what had just happened. My brother! She screamed to the sky. Let him go! I pinned my prize with my front paws and raised my head to look at her and shook it in a fucking no then went back to licking the blood from the vampire's wounds. We have been together for a thousand years, and you have killed him. You are killing him. She was pretty pissed off. She just stood there and pointed at me. I shrugged. As I now started to eat the flesh before me, it was actually very tasty. To say it was old, as they said. I expected it to taste really bad because it was dead, but it tasted fresher than anything I'd ever eaten before. Maybe that was part of the vampire's magic, that they maintain their bodies really nice. Looking at her, there was not a wrinkle or a sign of age on that body. A bit like Kate Beckinsale. Hmm. I was now sitting here and waiting for a vampire to kill me, while thinking about the science that's based behind vampires. You know what, Will? I'm such a fucking nerd at times. Her voice became a bit screechy, and she bent at the hip and spat the next few words. I am going to destroy you wholly. I will steal your soul from you and send it to the very darkest place of hell. I will brutalize you and torture you and all those you love and care for. I will cage you and drain you every day. I will torture you in as many ways as I can. I will hurt you for the rest of your life, and I can hurt you well. You will beg me to be released from that life because you cannot go on your hope will be taken your want for life will go see now in most situations when they get this way with the threats it usually means that they can't carry them out but I wasn't 100% sure with vampires because well who the fuck knows the truth about vampires but if she could really do what she was saying why would she be telling me that and not doing it personally I find these moments just a little bit kind of awkward if you know what I mean then it happened I mean I literally stopped to watch because I think this was a proper bit of proper magic with proper magic thrown in that was going on there was like a purple flash like and a, a rift in the air above her head opened I mean like one of those have you seen one of those portal things that you see on the witcher yeah it was circular and expanded from the center and formed the perfect coruscating circle above her head it was fucking amazing i could see darkness and another set of stars in the sky in the hole that had been created i thought i could see fucking pyramids behind that and everything but that might have just been me trying to make this thing even cooler than it was the body before me whimpered on the floor so i held it down so that it would you know not stop the fun i thought it was dead how's it whimpering with her distraction i had noticed that the fucker on the floor was regenerating ah shit i didn't realize that cunts could do that i mean I've seen it in the movies, but really did not realise that it was a thing that they could do. So, I tore its head off and threw it as far away from the body as possibly could. 
that would at least slow the process down if it didn't stop it. But at this point, I had to get back to watching what the fuck was going on with her and the purple ring in the sky. I mean, this made Harry Potter stuff seem extremely shite. I cannot do it justice in a description, but if you had several million dollars to spend on CGI, it would look like that. It was, it well, it was, it was, well, it was, it, it was just amazing. The hole in the air suddenly fell and swallowed the woman. It then rattled, fizzed, and then shrunk and disappeared into nothing. I stared for some time at the point on the floor, but nothing more happened. Had she run away? Thank fuck for that, I thought. Then suddenly she dropped from the sky and landed in the exact spot where the vampire had stood. If I could have spoken, I would have been speechless. Of course, she landed in the most brilliant superhero pose, all athletic and shit. In each hand was a black sword that looked as though it had been designed by H.M. Geiger. I mean, they were inorganic and organic at the same time. Proper wicked. Her outfit was now so BDSM nightclubby that most 15-year-old boys would have lost a load just looking at her. She wore it with highly polished leather or latex, and to say it was figure-hugging would have not given it a fair description. It looked like it had either been sprayed or painted on her, and that painter had been a very lucky bastard. Because, wow... On her head, she had a crown of black metal that would have been a 50th level helmet in some of those role-playing games where females' armour gets stronger, but made with less material as they go up the ranks. Let's just say, wow. She held her pose. One sword was laid along the floor, the other raised to the sky. She lifted her head and opened her eyes, and her eyes were not those of a human anymore. They gave off a purple light, a bright and seditious purple light that seemed to pass through right through me it felt like she could see into me she could read my dark soul and be judging me as not worthy of her slowly she stood and raised the sword to either side of her as she took on yet another pose from the book of badass bitches posing she must spend a lot of time in the front of the mirror doing this shit can i be honest i've always had a thing for selene in underworld movies but kate kate i know we've talked about you already if if you're listening to this don't take it badly i mean i still f- fancy the fucking ass off you but but this i mean this was well i've run out of appropriate superlatives i would have crawled through broken glass just to sniff the rear tire of the laundry van that carried her dirty panties now you can probably work out that i'd not really been paying too much attention to things because this shit was happening in front of me and as much as she looked proper super cool i must have looked a right twat with my jaw hanging open and staring at her like well the single nerd at the high school dance staring at the popular cheerleader chick she began to walk around me in a practice method. I recognised the triangle step of the Carly practitioner and the smooth and live lunges of defensor. This woman was super trained. Oh shit, I was going to get minced up by her. She stopped and took on her fighting stance. I shook my head and transformed into my werewolf form as she lunged. Both swords were out ahead of her to skewer me. I ripped up a signpost from the ground and hit her with the end that still had the huge concrete ball on it from where it had been held in the ground. She flew sideways with the impact and did a couple of tumbling back flippy things to regain her balance before I hit her again with the flung post. This time it drove her back and slammed her into the side of a car that folded slightly around her and the post. Then there was silence. Now, I've seen enough Marvel films to know that this was not the end of her, so I looked around for something else I could twat her with when she regained her composure. It was definitely not over at this point, because, well, we've we've seen the films. It would have been a waste of all those CGI sequences, huh? There was not much for me except some storm grates in the road. Desperation being the mother of invention, I managed to lever them off the floor and set them on my hands like knuckle dusters. My mistake had been not paying attention to her for a moment because I felt something slam into me from behind combined with a searing pain. I looked over my shoulder to see her swords buried to the hilt. They pierced my upper torso and she was being a right twat by rotating them, ready to slash them out of my body. Now that would have really hurt. Instead I leapt forward, removing myself from the blades and span and missed so badly with a swung right that I span around and around and around, off balance myself and ended up sitting on my ass in front of this beautiful murderer. 
Her mistake at this point was that of every movie baddie since the 50s. I mean, I think it's James Bond's fault personally because every baddie since then gloats, which is what she did. She stood and smirked and started to say something witty, which I didn't hear as a large metal grate hit her right in the pretty mouth and set her some distance from her original point on her back. She was lying silently, but yet again I knew that wasn't it, so I ran over to try and fit in the coup de grace, but of course, she flipped to her feet and waited for my charge, both saws raised, spitting a mouthful of blood from her perfect bloody mouth. That's right, it was still a perfect mouth. I had just hit her in that perfect mouth with 40 pounds of raw iron and she had a little cut lip. In my head, both Fen and I said the same thing. Ah, shit, we might be fucked here. Ahem. As she stood in front of me, I realised that I might have to try another angle of approach. Or I might just be dead. At that point, a screaming siren could be heard coming towards the spot where we stood. Then there was two, then three, then four. The first police car turned into the alley and the bright headlights spotted us out from the background and stopped us from our continuing battle. I've never said this before, but thank fuck for the police. Then the next car came in and came to a halt. I looked at her and she burned her gaze into mine. This is not done, dog. You will die. I will hunt you, she said. I could see that she was desperate to continue the fight and she was having a huge amount of difficulty walking away. Then she turned on the spot and all evidence of her and her brother was gone. I looked around and thought about my next move as more police cars and people arrived and they came out with guns and shit. Then it came to me in a sudden flash. In this case, the best course of action was the great call to action. Run away! So I ran. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to support the podcast, there's a support the podcast link. If you'd like to join a group that I started just recently, uh, in about four or five months' time actually, (laughs) then you can join it by going to the link in the description. There's my Twitter handle, and there is a book available there if you want to buy it. And if you don't want to do any of those things, That's cool too. Just realise I still love you. Bye.